where did you get into racing from? I know you did some uh, like stadium truck kind of racing, whatever yeah. that was. Yeah, so I did off-road uh, truck racing uh, since I was eight years old when my dad started off-road truck racing in the Lucas Oil off-road series. Uh, I pretty much just went over there and it was kind of a family thing. I was really just there because my parents or my dad was racing already and then I just fell in love with it, and then we started getting better, started winning races, winning championships, and at like 15 years old, I kind of peaked in that series, and I was like, okay, well, what's next? And so my mom actually signed me up for the diversity program, it said it didn't submit or whatever, <laughs> and <laughs> somehow I ended up in North Carolina uh, driving a legend car and late model and stuff, so... Uh, I kind of got into that deal a little bit, and then all of a sudden I got picked up by Toyota and spent a couple years with them on a couple K&N races, and then I switched to Ford. So you haven't been oval racing very long? No, Not in uh -uh. the grand scheme of things? No, I haven't. Not very long at all. I got, like, not much family background in it. Like, all of it's still still new to me. I'm, I've learned the ropes now of it, but at the beginning, I was so lost. It's so different for me. Uh, the people are different. Um, I just feel like the whole atmosphere is a total change for me. Yeah. I, I personally love to see females come into the sport as drivers. I worked with Johanna Long for a little while, was a huge Danica Patrick fan. Like, I, lo I love to see the progression. So you're having to play catch up. And, and that's kind of the thing that, that most females in sports, motorsports have to do anyway, because guys do start racing in this world now at five years old. And it's mm -hmm. crazy how good they can be by the time they're nine. So they have 10 years more experience than the majority of the guys you're around, right? So how, oh, yeah. how do you close that gap? Yeah, like I'm not touching pavement till I was about 15 years old. Like it's tough, very, very tough. But I don't even know if there's a way to close that gap. Like you go back on like racing reference. Matt Crafton's been racing trucks longer than I've been alive. Like it's hard to make up those years. Like th that's tough. True like, story. Yeah. It's, it's tough to beat that experience. Like knowing that those guys have been to those tracks 20 times, like, and you're just going there for the first time, like last year with no practice, just taking the green and hoping that your truck is kind of what they say it's like and going to handle that way and nothing's going to go wrong it's it's hard to trust that well not only not only are have they been to the track probably for 15 20 years for multiple races years and we used to practice hours two three hours sometimes for cut trucks we get a couple hours of practice and now there's 20 minutes and good luck yeah, 20 minutes, and we're riding to qualifying. Like, and, yeah. that, and that was just this year. I mean, you, how many races do you go to where your first lap on the track was the green flag of the race? Well, majority. You know, 20, yeah, whatever, 20, year, whatever it was, 2020. Year was tough last year because we did a lot of sim work, just virtual stuff. Like, this is what a start's going to be like. This is what this is going to be like because our first lap was going to be at the green flag. Yeah. So we did a lot of work of situational stuff like that. The, that had been the hardest year to enter any racing series in general when you're you know that that's by far the toughest year and i don't think a lot of people realize this and i think you know you you come out of the arca series you come out of the canine series with wins and people just think wow you know she's she's gonna be amazing here you know she's the next big thing talk about how big that step is from the arca slash canine series to the truck series because i mean the competitive competitiveness and the the level of competition you're going to go against ramps up by 10 times maybe 20 times you know oh it's yeah i feel huge. like i kind of got into the canine arca stuff as it started going on its downslope, like you see where it's at now, it's nowhere near where it was four years ago. And I feel like it just, it almost didn't prepare me properly in the way I felt like I should have been prepared for it. Um, just with the competitive level, instead of going out there and having 20 great trucks and it was five good cars and it's still like, yeah, those guys are good, but there's only five of them, a few wrecks or whatever. You take out two or three, and then next thing you know, it's just you and someone else. And so I feel like there was a lot of situations where I, I did learn, but I needed to learn more and prepare more. And those tracks were small that we were racing on. So like when we go to like a Martinsville, I feel comfortable. But like and then you start going to these bigger tracks, it, was, it took some time to learn. But I think that I've tried to use every single resource to prepare for it, but it's still hard, very, very hard. One thing I've been impressed with you is I've seen people race like idiots around you, and I've seen them, I don't want to say take advantage of you, I just think they've they've raced you poorly yeah. and, and put you in really bad positions. Oh, yeah. And I don't see you really returning the favor. Like for mm -hmm. your age and your experience level, that's impressive because I say this all the time. When I sat down to talk to Noah Gragson when he was leaving the truck series to go up to the Xfinity series, I said, you're going to be a better Xfinity series driver because, A, you're not around a bunch of idiots all the time, which if you're 
after about eighth place on back in trucks, there's there's more idiots than not back there. Oh, it's oh yeah, terrible. and and the terrible. trucks are so dependent upon one another to go fast. Mm-hmm. You have to use each other's air, and you have to side draft, and you have to do all the things that actually suck. That in terms of being independent as a race car driver, how do you keep your cool in there? That was the hardest part was learning the air, like having people talk to you and coming from off road racing, you didn't deal with air. Like I had no clue. Like what do you mean you got you got feel the air and feel on your right rear or whatever? And I'm like. I had no clue what I was getting myself into. I'm like, man, this is going to be hard to like feel the air. And so uh, that was a challenge, but I feel like it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. But even racing around those guys, I feel like we do get taken advantage of a lot. But also, I'm, I, get, I get fired up when someone does something to me, like really fired up. And I think it's my dad kind of like <laughs> yeah. t- speaking through me. But uh, I, we've had so many situations where we've gotten wrecked out or put in bad positions and – uh, it could just be not our fault and just get in a situation, someone else's situation. And I feel like I have kept my cool because I know how crucial it is that I need good finishes, start popping off good finishes, get the momentum going. And that's why I don't retaliate to take that chance of something happening to me. Um, you see, oh my gosh, it's, you get a tire rub and it's just downhill quick. And like, that's something that I don't want to put myself in that position. Very mature of you. To do I don't that. think she's ever keyed up and lost her cool. Not I lose. Time. I don't key up when yeah. I lose my call. Cool, just so. you, just just, <laughs> sc- just scream without hitting the button. That's yeah. all you gotta do. Oh, my bling got stuck at um. Where was the last? Well, year actually, yeah, at? you did actually key up one time. You, she yelled at me. I did. Uh, well, you, well, you probably remember. you probably deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> no, she she uh, we were coming. We we're going on the back stretch of Darlington, coming to the green. So I'm like, all right. Oh yeah, I did. Clean your tires you. up, and, and you know everything you do to get ready. And we're going through three and four, and she's. I say something to her, she keys up and talks back. Well, all the truck noise, the motor never goes away. So the button's like still keyed. It's stuck down. Mm-hmm. We go green. I'm spotting, but every time I let off, I can still hear the motor and all that. So you know the driver's still keyed up. And I mean, we're going through one and two, and I'm just like, I'm still spotting, but every time I let off, I can hear the truck motor still. So I know it's like overruling you. Yes. Yeah. And I know she's probably doesn't know it because that you she can't, can't tell. hear it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think. She just thought I had an issue or something when it like taking a nap. As soon as I heard the motor stop, I'm like, Haley, your button stuck. So, you know, your button sticking. Don't push unless you have to. But yeah, I guess she yelled at me. for that. Yeah, I keyed up. Did you call him a little? I I just I like it was off of two. I just remember just like because I was so focused on what was going on. Like I'm. Well, Darlington's tough through one and two. It is. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Trying to see, make sure they're not stacking up because that happens a lot. Darlington, someone lights up the tires, that row's stacking. So I'm trying to look and like see what's going on there and then trying to protect my right side, seeing how many trucks are on my inside so I know how much room I have to turn down the track off two and like. I was utter panic, and so I just grabbed button one time, and I was like, sweater! <laughs> and then it started working again. <laughs> We've got exciting news. OfferPad wants to buy your home. Go to OfferPad.com right now and tell them all about it. You'll receive a cash offer within 24 hours. 